Hi everybody, let's now look at the elasticity of the industry labour supply curve. We'll start with a little definition. The elasticity of the labour supply curve measures the responsiveness of labour supply given a change in the wage rate. Simple as that. So when the wage rate increases or decreases, what is the effect on labour supply? That's what we're looking at here. So we can have an elastic looking labour supply curve, we can have an inelastic looking labour supply curve again. I've drawn this in the labour market, so make sure you're sticking with me in the labour market right here. So if we have an elastic labour supply, what does that mean? It means the proportionate change in labour supply is greater than the change in the wage rate, whereas inelastic labour supply means that the proportionate change in labour supply is less than the change in the wage rate. All right. So what are the factors, what are the determinants of elasticity of labour supply? Well, there are four key ones you need to know. In your head you're thinking, if the wage rate changes, um, will there be a sudden flock of workers into the profession? So if the wage rate goes up, will lots of workers enter? If the answer is yes, we have elastic supply. So what makes that uh, the case? Or if the wage rate increases, will there not be much of an increase in the supply of workers? If that's the case, why is that happening? And there are four reasons why. Uh, so the nature of the skills required in the job is a very important determinant of the elasticity of labour supply. Um, the greater the skills required, the harder it is for those workers who are not already in the profession to take jobs in the profession. So um, if there are very specific skill sets, even if wages increase massively, it's going to be very hard for those people who don't have the right skills to work in this industry to come and take the jobs. So the more specific the skill requirements are, the more inelastic supply tends to be. The length of time of the training period, similarly, the longer the training period is, the less likely those outside the profession are going to come and take jobs or give it a go and take jobs, even if wage rates go up. So that makes labour supply very inelastic, wage inelastic in that sense. So the longer the training period, even if wages go up, the more wage inelastic supply is going to be, as it's very hard for workers to accept such a long training period. Vocational elements of professions. So Professions like teaching, like nursing, for example, have all got vocational elements to it. So let's go the opposite way. So if wages fell, you wouldn't expect there to be a sudden flock of teachers leaving the profession, necessarily. You wouldn't, accept, you wouldn't expect there to be a flock of nurses leaving the profession, necessarily. It depends on the, the extent of the cut in wages, of course. But a small cut, let's say, teachers are unlikely to leave their profession because they don't do teaching uh, for the sake of of monetary benefit, you know. Uh, different teachers may argue against that, but you know, I'll, I'm an example of that. You know, I'm coming coming into teaching knowing that I could earn a higher wage in the city or somewhere else, uh, knowing that I could do something else where I could get a much higher wage than what I get in teaching. Yet I've still chosen the teaching profession. That tells you that there is a vocational element to why I'm here as a teacher, and as a result of that, teachers are less um, responsive to changes in wages as uh, people in other professions where vocational elements do not exist so much, where people are in them mainly for monetary benefit. So if you're working in vocational professions, labour supply tends to be quite wage inelastic here. And the time period under consideration, in the short run, immediately after a wage change, like a wage decrease for example, you don't necessarily see much of an impact on the quantity supplied of labour. Why is that? Well that's because a lot of people need to give notice, a lot of people take time to adapt to wage changes. So just because your wage decreases, it might take you a while before you can actually leave the profession because you need to give notice. Maybe you think it's only a temporary change, so you don't make a decision so quickly. You wait to see if this change is going to be a permanent one, and then you decide to leave the profession. So in the short run, uh, the supply of labour tends to be quite wage inelastic, whereas in the long run it becomes more elastic. So these are the determinants of the elasticity of labour supply. And now you understand why you might want to draw your labour supply curve more elastic or more inelastic, depending on the labour market you're working in. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you all in the next video.